Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of Sapient Thoughts where we discuss theophilosophical issues, where we refute those arguments of the detractors of Islam in addition to making our own arguments for the veracity of Islam. Today inshallah we're going to be speaking about a very fruitless and frivolous and capricious claim, a weak claim, a ridiculous contention uh, of the highest order. Really, um, a claim that says that the Quran says in chapter number 51, verse number 49, that everything was created in pairs. And we know of such a thing as asexual reproduction, and therefore this is false. So, I don't know whether to stop, roll my eyes, or even try and dignify this uh, thing with the, uh, with the response, but maybe I should, for the, for the satisfaction of those who are a little bit curious. Really and truly, we've said this more than once, the word kul does not necessarily mean every single thing with the exclusion of nothing in the genus. This is something which we know from the usage of the word kul, which is also used in the Quran. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Ahqaf, chapter 46, verse number 25, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تُدَمِّرُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ بِأَمْرِ رَبِّهَا فَأَصْبَحُوا لَا يُرَى إِلَّا مَسَاكِنُهُمْ That it destroys, there's a wind that destroys everything uh, with the command of its Lord. So, they came to be uh, not seen except for their indwellings. And of course, uh, this does not mean that this wind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about is a wind that destroyed everything, including animals and the earth and the cosmos, even though there's the exception there, illa masakinuhum, except for their indwellings. It doesn't mean everything was destroyed except for the indwellings. So the uh, kul here, is not intended by any means or any stretch of the imagination to mean every single thing on the face of the earth, let alone the entire existence or entire universe. This is impossible to extrapolate from this verse. And that is why many of the scholars have actually written books and treatises about this word kul, because many people that employ literalistic understandings of uh, the Arabic language do not understand these kinds of usages. So Siyulti wrote a book, Al-Kul wa ma'alayhi tadul, or the word kul and what it implies or what it uh, evidences or shows. Now, is it talking about animals? Uh, it doesn't say animals in this verse, <clears throat> but it doesn't mean just animals, because if you look at some of the exegesis of the past, even of uh, great uh, scholars like Al-Hassan al-Basri and others. And even if you look at Tabari, what he says, they don't restrict this to just meaning male and female. For example, they say, a zawj is anything and its opposite. So for example, if you have night, then the opposite will be the day. If you have heaven, the opposite will be the earth, for example, you know, from our perspective, before someone jumps and says, no, this is, just calm down. We're talking about the anthropocentric perspective. Otherwise, it's all meaningless. We're nothing in the universe anyway. So here again, this is a flatly weak and false uh, contention, putting into the Quran what they wish was in there and is not in there. So simply to answer this question, the word kul doesn't mean every single thing, and it's not restricted to male and female uh, uh, distinctions. It could be in anything and its opposite, quite frankly. And this is facilitated in the language and understood by the classical exegetes of the time. And I hope this answers the question. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.